A lot of change or what stops us from change is fear, right? Fear of failure, fear of ridicule, fear of persecution, and you know, fear of what other people think about you and what you're doing. Hello, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing innovators in the creative, social impact, and earth conservation spaces who are working to change the world. This episode is brought to you by Brain FM. Brain FM combines the best of music and neuroscience to help you relax, focus, meditate, and even sleep. I love it and have been using it to write, create, and do some of my deepest work. Because you're a listener of the show, you can get a free trial. Head over to brain.fm slash innovative mindset to check it out. If you decide to subscribe, you can get 20% off with the coupon code innovative mindset, all one word. And now let's get to the show. Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg. I'm super thrilled you're here, and I'm really excited to have this week's guest on the show. I was on his show recently, and he is wonderful, and I can't wait to tell you all about him. Check this out. As the founder of Adapt You and Adapt Media, Derek Peterson is committed to helping people and businesses do one thing, change. At age 13, Derek's journey as an entrepreneur began with the neighborhood phone directory and cold calling more than 100 homes to pitch his lawn care services with equipment he didn't even own yet. <laughs> I love that. After graduating with a degree in marketing, Derek headed into, quote, big corporate, unquote, and worked at ADP, Covidian, and Allergan from 2012 to present. Derek founded and ran three highly successful organizations. Through both personal and professional journeys, Derek has become fascinated and committed to helping people and businesses execute the change needed to grow and thrive. Through this passion, Adapt You and Adapt Media were born. How fantastic is that? With the top ranked Adapt You podcast and focus on impacting others, Derek helps his personal coaching clients tap into who they are, what they want, and who they wish to become. Wow, this is fantastic. Welcome so much. I'm so grateful that you're here, Derek. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure. So let's let's get let's let's just write. I, my brain is a little fogged right now. I because I'm reading about adapting and I'm going, yeah, I'm talking about adapting and adapt a, a, a sort of adaptation and what it means in in animal species and all of that. What does adapting mean to you that you decided to make it sort of the hallmark of everything you do? Great question. So. Really, the the word adapt became it's super important to me when I went through a personal change in my life. That's actually really where it all started. Mm -hmm. It was in my mid thirties. Um, I was, uh, you know, I I was working for. I actually I owned a, a medical distribution company, and I was so focused at that time in my life on work, on driving a business, on you know uh, making money. Um, I was conditioned my entire life, um, you know, through society and decisions that I made that my measuring stick for success was how much money I was making, hmm. uh, and not, not really focused on, you know, maybe what impact I was having or how good of a father I was or how good of a husband I was. And I found myself one day inside of my home, um, and I uh, just bought a brand new or built a brand new home in, in the Carolinas. It was uh, an obscenely large house with a, a, a pool that would rival something in MTV Cribs in the backyard. Wow. I was sitting in a theater that I built in my basement that had 22 seats in it. And I sat there by myself, completely alone, watching Breaking Bad, I think it was on Netflix. I started <laughs> binge, binge watching Breaking Bad. And here <laughs> I was, you know, um, what from the outside looked like the picture of success, you know, married, three kids, lived in a gated community, 8,000 square foot house, wow. MTV Cribs pool, cars, all that stuff. And I'm in a theater that's massive. And I found myself, I, 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 I remember the moment distinctly. I was like, I am miserable. Hmm. I'm absolutely miserable. I'm like, why? And I realized that there were so many things about me as an individual and the decisions I was making with the people that I was working with, uh, the relationship that I was in, everything needed to change, but mainly I needed to change hmm. because I didn't like who I had become. So I want, I decided to, at that point, adapt 
and change everything wow. all at once. Um, which maybe been a little aggressive now that I look back at it. Um, <laughs> a little, I bit off maybe more than I could chew. I decided, um, you know, my marriage was at a point where it was past repair. So I decided to, um, you know, we decided to, to part ways. We have a fantastic relationship today because of it. Um, and decided to, uh, the people that I was in business with needed to change. So I exited that business. Um, and I did all this at once, which, which put a lot of stress on me. But then I started this journey of, of introspection and personal change. And it was like a rebirth. It was like an awakening. And, you know, I mean, we could, we could spend the entire podcast just talking about that adaptation that I went through, but through personal self-development, self-realization and a number of different things, um, several years later, I found myself a completely changed and adapted person so much. So it was so profound, uh, and I was so much happier the people in my life, my business that I had started, you know, everything was just so on track after going through that change that I, I was like, everyone needs to experience this ever, you know, mm -hmm. so many people are in the same boat and they don't realize it. Uh, they need to have that aha moment. You know, for me, it was watching breaking bad in my basement mm -hmm. and, um, you know, so from there, I decided to dedicate um, my life to helping people through that process of change, to understand change, to master change, because change is the only constant in life. Mm. Um, and adaptation is something that if we're not good at it, as Darwin said, um, it is just something that, uh, you know, it's you're going to struggle in life. You don't understand how to adapt. So I started the Adapt You podcast, which you were on. Fantastic guest. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. And, and you know, and, and we have guests on that that help other people tell, you know, tell other people their stories of how they went through a change or how they change or impact different, you know, things in the world, uh, like, like, you know, very much as you did. And, and, and that was my way of giving back. That was my way of, you know, I don't try to monetize the podcast or anything. It's literally just... Let's bring people on to help other people hear stories, to help them through that process of change. Maybe it'll ignite their rebirth. Um, and then I opened a marketing company because that was my passion. I got out of medical, decided to chase my passion versus my pension. Mm. Um, and that was something that was important to me when I went through that process, do something that to help other businesses, you know, really you know, promote and sell their products, uh, you know, from a marketing aspect and, and, and really help them change the way in which they're doing things. So, um, change and adaptation is, I mean, even the shirt I'm wearing right now, it says adapt on it. It's, it's just become an integral part of my life because of that story. Wow. Wow. I'm I, hang on one second. I need to take all of that in because there was so much there. Okay. So here's, here's the thing that I'm, that, that snapped up for me or rose up for me while you were talking. And that is, that took a lot of courage, right? On your part, it took a lot of courage. And this is, after all, the Innovative Mindset podcast. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think someone who gets to that point needs to do to change, to get over the fear of change and to change and to really change how they view the world in order to succeed as an entrepreneur, or maybe not even as an entrepreneur, just just feeling like you are walking in the world on the path you've chosen. How do you think someone can get the courage and get over the fear of, of making those kinds of sweeping changes in order to take the steps that you likely talk to your clients about? So from a great question. So and there's a lot there to unbox from from a from a change perspective from someone in their personal life, right? Right. So if they have something they're looking to affect and change, say it's their, you know, uh, they want to lose weight. Uh, they want to, uh, better the relationship. They want to, um, you know, you can think of a number of different things that people mm -hmm. want to change in effect. They want to you know, uh, start a business, right. Uh, you know, a lot of change or what stops us from change is fear, right. Mm -hmm. Um, fear of some and, and fear of failure, fear of ridicule, fear of persecution, um, and you know, feel fear of what other people think about you and what you're doing. And mm -hmm. I think that's a big one. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, I think, someone really needs to stop for a minute and and think to themselves, really think through that fear and, and dissect it and break it down, and and start to 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 really sort of piece it apart to realize, like, you know. 
yeah, that, that could happen, right. You know, someone, you know, like, for example, I could start a business and, you know, my family may not support me, you know, um, but then go a little deeper. Well, 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 how will that impact you really start to break down that fear and, 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 you know, and, and piece it into smaller parts so that you can realize that, 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 that fear really is, is, is just in your head. Right. Mm. So for me, there were so many things that was stopping me from, um, you know, wanting to leave the business and from wanting to, um, you know, make such massive change in my life. Cause I worried about what other people may have thought about me and what, uh, and what I was doing. I think when you get to that point where you care more about what is important to you and how you feel versus what others feel and think about you is really when you can start to make a massive change and impact in your life, you know, change is something that's uh, sometimes just thrown upon us as well, right? We don't have a choice, right? you know, um, and we have to react and we have to change in, in that regard. But, you know, when it, when it comes to making an active decision to change, I think also one of the biggest things is realizing and accepting what needs to be changed. Having that sort of coming to Jesus moment, like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Like I'm a jerk, right? Uh, I'm doing the wrong things. I'm not being a good father. Like being, being honest with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And having that real assessment. So, because once you become aware of it, then you know it, it it brings it to the forefront, and then from there you can start to develop solutions necessary to do it. But that act of jumping and taking the action, I think honestly, comes from practicing the art of change, which, which to me is a lot of what we discuss on, on my podcast, which is intentionally putting yourself in challenging and difficult situations when you can, um, it would not, not, not dangerous situations, but challenging and difficult situations to challenge yourself, to, uh, to start to feel that process of change and to practice it, you know, to, to sign up for that marathon and to take the steps necessary to do that and to go through the struggle. So, Next time you want to sign up for a 5k, it's a chip shot, right? So same thing, <laughs> right? <laughs> that it's was a golf fun. reference, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so I love, I love what you're saying. I do. And I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's something that you said that I'm like, no, oh, I need to, I need to talk to you about this. You said that once you're more worried about you and your sense of yourself than you are about other people's opinions, that's when you can make those changes. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. And I, and it just, it, it, that was an aha moment for me, just because we do tend to be a categorizing species. We do tend to look at, you know, the group and how they think. But when you're working with a client, when you're working with a, either a personal client or a business client, you need to get them, I assume, to get to the point where they're more concerned about themselves as far as their own opinion of themselves and what they're doing than they are with what other people think. How does that coincide or reconcile with marketing to potential clients and customers? So from a marketing perspective, that's a great question. So from a marketing perspective, because, because we're talking about two different audiences here, right? You've got, we've got our personal coaching clients, those who are looking to change something or affect something in their lives mm -hmm. versus a marketing client. So would you want me to delve down more the marketing side or more the personal side? Cause it's somewhat of a, a little bit of a different approach. Okay. So that, that makes sense then what I was, what I was like, huh, what's going on there was that I thought that, that the, the two were correlated. If There's a bit not, of correlation. Okay, there is a okay. bit of correlation. Yeah. So on the personal side, and we'll talk briefly about both, you know, on the personal side, yes. Uh, and, and I think this is why it resonated so much with you is that, you know, we as a species are very concerned about what other people think about us. We, and we're more concerned, not about we, what we think other people think of us, right? Cause we may not even know, right? Mm -hmm. So it's sure. not what I, what I know that you think about me. It's what I think you might think about me. <laughs> so when you break that down, right. it's kind of absurd. Right? right. So, you know, unfortunately, we as the species, we fill that little hole in our heart with um, with 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 bad habits, with stuff, with going, mm -hmm. you know, so so rather than, you know, uh, me having self love for myself and caring what what I do and caring what I think about myself, if, if I don't if I don't do that internal work, I fill that hole with 
dumb things, right? Mm, with, with, right. you know, drinking with, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, spending my time doing, you know, too much here or spending all this money on shopping to kind of fill that void in my heart. Um, and, and then I spend a lot of, you know, a lot of time caring what other people think about me versus doing the internal work, um, and loving myself and filling that hole on my own. Then that really opens you up. Once you have self-love for yourself, that's where really I think you start to care less about what other people think about you because you care about what you think about you, right? Right. right. And that's important. And with a business, you know, I, I, I think you know we we I find business owners struggle quite a bit with being you know too concerned about their messaging and 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 getting it and getting it wrong. Right. Um, you know, we speak to business owners all day, every day that have a product or they have a service and they're very concerned with, you know, um, you know, the product and service that they spent so much time developing and working on, that they're almost timid and shy to be able to really talk about it, to really be able to express what it does in a bold way, mm -hmm. because they're so concerned with how it may be perceived or how it may be thought of. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they can they they tend to backpedal and they tend to kind of uh, tiptoe or beat around the bush a little bit about what their product and service does. And they don't really market it in a way that's going to be able to get someone's attention. It's a very mm -hmm. busy and noisy place out there. You've got cell phones and iPads and, you know, stuff's flashing in front of your eyes and video and Snapchat and TikTok. You got all these different things. So you have people's attention for a very, very small amount of time. In mm -hmm. order to get their attention, you need to make a bold statement and you need to make it pretty quick because you're only going to have their eyes for about three to five seconds. Right. So we, we help business owners get past the point of, you know, um, you know, having that, that, that fear uh, about what, what they may think about the way in which we may market their, their brand or their product. Oh. You're saying so much stuff that I'm like, wait, I want to talk about this. And I, and I know we don't have six hours, but I'd like to keep you for six hours and chat about it. Here's something that you said that I'm like, hmm, how do we, how do we get past that? What do we do? Uh, for First of all, I do want to go back to the personal stuff and talk about the first steps in gaining that awareness and love of self. But, but you said something that I'm like, okay, you said three to five seconds to get someone's attention. And I read somewhere recently that it actually is someone for example design like website design or something like that 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 it takes 50 milliseconds for someone to decide whether or not they like the design of something what something looks like and if they don't like it they're moving on so mm -hmm. so how do you what's the first step to grabbing someone if you're a company and you want to grab people's attention in a positive way of course right you're not you're not trying to coerce anybody you're just trying to be the person who or the company that that is attractive in that way that does grab that attention so that you can help the people you're trying to help if you're a business or an entrepreneur or company what's the first step how do you do that so it it certainly depends on the medium by which the individual or the potential customer is getting introduced to you right mm -hmm. so where are they seeing you for the first time so let's just talk for example about a website okay. right and mm -hmm. as you referenced it so, uh, you know, here at our firm, you know, we do a, a great deal of website design and it's mm -hmm. absolutely an art and it's a science, right? So it's, it, it, there's so many elements that go into having a uh, fantastic web design based off the science, as you said, of how long people's eye stays, you know, affixed in a certain area mm -hmm. and how they navigate and move through the website. Mm -hmm. So by using a combination of the appropriate design, um, when someone first opens a website and understanding how the eye moves um, and how it absorbs content is what we focus on. So mm -hmm. for when you open up a website, we use, we'll get very specific for a minute. The first thing you see, it's called a hero image, right? So it's that first image. It sometimes can be a video. We use video a lot um, and you'll have often the menu and then you'll have wording that's laid over an image and then you'll have a respective call to action if it's designed appropriately so the mm -hmm. i actually moves in a z when it reads a website so it mm -hmm. starts at the top moves across comes across the middle and then look and scans across the bottom mm -hmm. most people's eyes scan a website so we want to develop that that hero image and again we use video that is captivating and eye-popping and colorful Mm -hmm. Um, and you have appropriate calls to action across the top of the Z. So when they're scanning across, they know where they can go on the website 
And as they come across the middle, there's a statement that's written in what we call a story branding technique that is able to tell them uh, uh, how basically they are the hero in their own story. Mm -hmm. And we are there to provide a solution to become better at what they're trying to get accomplished. Right. Mm -hmm. So like if I'm struggling to fix my leaky roof, like, you know, we're the, the story that's going to be told in that statement is, is about your leaky roof and how we're going to take the pain out of leaky roof so that you can end up being the hero that gets it fixed. Right. And that's a very high level explanation of uh, explaining how we would create a statement um, that solves a problem for somebody and um, takes away the pain in a very easy fashion. And as they scan across the bottom of the Z, that's where we have respective calls to action. So all of that sounds like a lot and it's super busy. We've got menu items, buttons, statements. But within three to five seconds, people, like you said, I think you said 50 milliseconds. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how long that even is. I know. But, it's um, very short. <laughs> we'll that, go with that. 50, is that even a second? I don't even know. No, right? it's, I, no. it's, it's, uh, it's, think about 50 one thousandths of a second. So five one hundredths of a second. That's how That's long. That's really fast. Yeah, <laughs> super fast. Yeah. If pe and it doesn't surprise me with that statistic because people's attention has just gotten shorter and shorter and shorter. But the challenge is we're not going to change human nature. So we have to cater to it. Right. So in web design, if we're talking about that specifically right now, that's how we design that website. So when they quickly scan that in that Z, they'll know within three to five seconds or 50 milliseconds, I, I can't even think my mind would work that fast, <laughs> I know. what it is that you do and how you're going to solve my problem. And here's a button I can click to take action. Um, and then the rest of the website, which I could spend an hour on talking the architecture of it, you can continue to scroll and have respective calls to action throughout the site and use of video and images and, you know, keyword phrases and all that other stuff is, uh, you know, what's incorporated into a website to get someone to take, to take action. But with a lot of the messaging that we do to kind of answer your question, whether it be on a Facebook ad or Instagram, the whole key is to use imagery to capture their attention mm -hmm. um, and then use the appropriate wording because copy is super, super important to get people to understand that we're going to be your guide, right? We're like Yoda in Star Wars. <laughs> we're here to be your guide, but you're, you're Luke Skywalker, right? So um, the copy is always written in that fashion where most businesses make a mistake in their copy is they're like, no, we're awesome. Here's why we're awesome. And this is what we're going to do to help you. So they make it more about them mm. versus making it more about the customer. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest mistake most people make in marketing when it mm -hmm. comes to their imagery and their copy and their wording. Oh, that's fascinating. I love, and you know, the thing that you just said, that, that, it's, that it, it is a mistake that you're making yourself awesome rather than the client awesome and how you can help them be more awesome is the way to go. And yet once you know that you can't unknow it. So now I'm thinking about my own website. I'm like, Hmm, what can I be doing? And so, so let's say someone is looking, not just a website or marketing or, or adapting, changing. What is the first step they need to do in order to begin that process, uh, whether it's for their business or their personal sort of life? What is the first step someone needs to take? They're listening. So, okay, you're listening to this podcast episode with Derek Peterson, and you're going, "Wow, I need to make some changes." What's my first step? So let's let's talk about the personal side first. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so so the first step to making that change is 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 really understanding where you want to go. You know, to me, it's like, okay, if you recognize that you have something that you want to affect, let's, let's just use an example. Someone wants to lose weight, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So that first step to change is understanding, okay, specifically, where is it that I want to go? Um, meaning, okay, how much weight do you want to lose to say, Hey, I just want to lose weight. Like I want to change that. It's very mm -hmm. vague and, you know, vague goals get you vague results, right? Right. So unless you have a level of specificity to it to say, okay, I want to lose 50 pounds by January 1st, because, you know, and you have to have a, a reason behind it, right? You have to have a reason that's tied to an emotion. Um, otherwise, 
um, it's, it's hard to have that motivation to make that respective change. Mm. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, so if you, if it's tied to, if it's vaguely, if it's a vague goal and if it's tied to, and it's not tied to something that's an emotionally important to you, I think that's the first challenge and change and why people just don't do it. Mm-hmm. Right. It's just not that important to them. So tying it to something that's emotional to say, okay, I want to lose 50 pounds by January 1st because, um, my wife is having a child, let's say, and, and I want to be around to be able to take care of that child. And right now I know I'm hel- I'm not healthy and I want to mm-hmm. be a father to that child. Right. So mm-hmm. now I'm tying it to an emotion. I'm tying to something right. that's important and something that's bigger than me. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's super important is, is, is really first identifying where it is that you want to go. Then from there, I think it's important to, to really accept where you are, to acknowledge where you are and to be honest with yourself, right? So to stick with that weight example, you know, it's very easy for, for someone to say to themselves, well, uh, you know, maybe I, maybe I'm good, you know, cause all the people you're hanging out with happen to be overweight, right? Or you start to make excuses like, well, it's because of, of this or because of that. And you don't really acknowledge the fact that like, okay, yeah, I do need to change this. Right. So it's, it's a, it's a total acknowledgement and admittance of where you are, which can be hard. That can be difficult, you know, and, and, um, you know, so from a personal perspective, I think, and I just, you asked for one step, I just gave you two, sorry. I tend to ramble. Um, So, so yeah, that's that, those, those would be the first sort of two steps, I think, from a personal perspective, uh, to making change and, and something that on our podcast, we have the tendency to walk people through. Mm, I love that. And, and I'm, I'm glad you gave more than one step because something you said earlier coincides with something I read about you. You said marketing is both an art and a science. And I read somewhere that you also believe that change is both an art and a science. Can you talk a little bit about what that means, how is change both an art and a science? So change is something that from, from a science perspective, you know, if you look at those, if you look at those steps, uh, mm-hmm. that I just discussed, you mm-hmm. know, you could call that the science of change, right. Okay. Uh, and, and we're just skimming the surface right now, of those first few steps, but, but you can systematically pragmatically and, you know, being, being uh, a very scientific individual, uh, yourself, uh, you know, you can relate to this, mm-hmm. um, you know, you, you create steps, you create a formula, you keep you create a process. Um, and when we start to follow that process, um, you know, it gives us rails, it gives us a guide, it gives us a pathway. Uh, but, but sometimes, you know, life, it, 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 it doesn't, it, when you start to go down that path, it doesn't always go as we had planned, right? It's not always going to be exactly within those guards and within those railways. So sometimes we need to have an open mind uh, to see that there may be alternative pathways along that journey mm-hmm. that will get us to that point, right? So, you know, if it, it's, it's, it's not always a straight line. Um, and when we create a, uh, the science side of it, we create those pathways. It seems simple. It's a straight line. Okay. Follow these steps. I'm going to get there. Well, we have to listen to the feedback. You know, we have to listen to the experience and the things that we're doing. So for example, on the weight loss example, you know, if I start a particular type of diet, and a particular type of exercise uh, routine that was, you know, part of going to help me achieve my goals, and I'm not seeing the results that I want. Well, maybe I need to sit back and and take and do, uh, you know, a food sensitivity test, or maybe I, you know, to see if maybe the types of foods I'm eating, um, you know, my body responds differently to. You know, maybe from an exercise program perspective, I need to consider a different type or form of exercise or switching mm-hmm. it up because my body isn't responding right. So I need to adjust. I need to adapt through that process and listen to those signals, but keep the ship pointed in the right direction. So that's where I think the art comes into play Mm -hmm. um, of changes. I think sometimes when we look at the science of things and we start to follow those pathways, we put blinkers on and we don't listen to the feedback. We're not willing to deviate slightly because in those deviations are where some of the most beautiful experiences and some of the most beautiful um, uh, uh, change occurs, right? Or, or opportunities present themselves sure. um, because we're not so rigid and so regimented. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, if you've ever seen that mem or meme, or however you say that word, meme, uh, <laughs> meme thank you. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, where it says it shows 
what people think success looks like and it's a straight line and then what it actually looks like it's two points but it's a, it's a line that just goes all over the place right <laughs> sure and that's that's the art right it's your willingness to be able to be open to the fact that it's 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 going to require some adaptation through the adaptation right and and that makes so much sense i mean to me that notion of of the scientific process the scientific method that you know you come up with an experiment and then you make it repeatable blah 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 all of that is mm -hmm. absolutely crucial but then being open to something not going the way you thought and let's say you have uh, hypothyroidism or something to keep the weight loss thing uh, analogy going you mm -hmm. need to look at different possibilities so when you're working with a life coaching a personal coaching client and i know for example you're a triathlete i believe and mm -hmm. when you're when you're doing that when you're going from that place of hey this isn't working let's try something else to me what does that take yes we know that it's an art but it sounds like it takes some some sort of dedication every minute of every day and how does someone get the wherewithal what do you tell your clients to help them get the wherewithal and the courage to stick with it so just so i make sure i understand the question so <laughs> it's <laughs> all right let me rephrase it in a in a way that isn't is old to speak basically okay. if someone is having uh, if, if what you're trying isn't working and mm -hmm. you want to encourage them to look at the art of the adaptation, sort of what other possibilities are there, how do they find the courage and dedication to continue even though it feels like they are, quote, failing, unquote? Great. Okay. Great question. So before anyone steps onto the pathway of change, they need to accept that the biggest teacher throughout that entire process is going to be failure. Uh -huh. So, and they need to frame the fact that there will be, you know, like any war, there's a lot of little battles. So you're going to win some and you're going to lose some, but when you, when you win, it's great. You move, you know, you move the troops forward, so to speak, but when you lose, it's, you know, you can look at it as defeat, you can get down on yourself and you can get frustrated and you can quit, or you can reframe in your mind and train your mind and, and just, and it's really all about awareness that, okay, that didn't work. <laughs> and mm -hmm. as a scientist, it's like, you know, uh, you know, you can, I, I, who was it that it was Edison invented a light bulb. I think he said, you know, I, 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 I've, I've found, I didn't fail. I just found like 1200 ways to not make the light bulb. Right. right? You know, <laughs> I that, found 1200 that... <laughs> ways it didn't work. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, you can, you, you, you start to, we start to train our clients to understand like, no, it's like this, this isn't a, this isn't a failure, right? You're, you're, you, 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 this is an opportunity for you to take that feedback, you know, just change the F word from failure to feedback and, and make the adjustment necessary to continue down your path. Because again, it's not always going to be a straight line. You're going to get thrown some curveballs. Things aren't going to work. Um, and it's really to keep people on the rails. I think a lot of it comes down to how they frame failure uh, and how they see that as feedback. And then look at it, look at it as a positive thing. Look mm -hmm. at it as like, okay, awesome. I did this and it's, and it sucked. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Awesome. Right. Cause, <laughs> cause I'll get that with clients, you know, and I'll get that from whether it be a personal client or marketing client, you know, we ran this Facebook ad and they're like, it didn't work. I'm like, all right, good. Now we know what not to do. Right. Um, and, and let's look at why, right. So that's the next step where it's like, well, well, why didn't it work? Like let's dissect it. Let's break it down. Whether it's individual coaching client or a, or a, um, you know, or a marketing client and let's dissect the why, and then let's adjust right? Let's make that minor adjustment. Let's adapt again. So adapting while adapting and, um, and let's continue the ship pointing in the right direction. But again, having that open mind to know, like, it's not like the, you know, staying you know, within strict parameters, uh, scientifically, as you said, of creating, you know, a study or whatnot, but, and not having an open mind to, you know, maybe making some adjustments. So that's, that's where that art and science comes into play. But yeah. Yeah. It's all about failure. 
Yeah, and, and it makes sense because, you know, it, with the with the scientific experiment, you either support your hypothesis or you refute your hypothesis. But if you refute it, then you can confidently go to the next step, to the next level of the experiment. And so this is one of those instances where once you know it, you can't unknow it. Once you know you're unhappy, you can't unknow that you're unhappy. Once you know you need to change, you can't unknow that you need to change. So can you relate that for me to a business that realizes their marketing, as you put it, sucks. Mm -hmm. How once they know that, once they know that it that it is not effective, that it's not working, what's the next step? Is it art or is it science? It's both. Okay. So I think the by the time a client gets to me, they're typically either brand new and they're they just don't know what they're doing and they want some help. Mm -hmm. Um, or they've tried everything, um, uh, and they're just like, okay, I give up. I need to hire somebody. <laughs> um, and well, let's talk about that individual for an example, mm -hmm. you know, um, they've, they've failed, um, and they're looking for a different way to do it. So they're typically not always open-minded to feedback about how they're structured. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and most nine times out of 10, they're pretty open to that. So, you know, it's just at that point, it's about having an honest conversation about what they did that sucked. Right. Um, and, and why it sucked mm -hmm. and then how we're going to make it suck less. Just stick <laughs> with that word. <laughs> so, so that is, that is, you know, um, uh, you know, sort of the process we go through with them is just having, again, that open and honest dialogue, you know, just like a personal client would have an admitting of where they are today, mm -hmm. becoming aware of where they are today. Um, because it's, it's awareness of it and awareness of why that then at, at least it gets you to the point where you're willing to accept the solution that we may suggest, you know, uh, with a personal client, we try to get them to come to that decision on their own accord because they're more apt to do it. But with a marketing client, you know, we may use a line of questioning with them to try to push them down a path to, to come to that realization as well, because they're more willing to do it. And sometimes they have no idea. And we just tell them like, oh, this right. is what you need to do. Right. So, um, but yes, once they understand why it's failed and why it's probably not working, that's where we can make that adjustment with them um, and really point them in the in the right in the right direction and start to create that science pathway. Like, okay, here's the plan. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do. But set the expectation with them that you know we're going to be doing things like A/B testing, split testing, and a variety of different things with ads. Um, and with your website, for example, like it's nothing is, is, you know, uh, uh, static that like, it doesn't, it doesn't always stay the same. We're constantly changing, evolving based off the feedback of the way people move on your website, the way people are interacting with your ads and we're constantly tweaking and adjusting. Right. So, uh, we set that expectation that while we have a plan, we will be changing it as we go, um, based off feedback based off the way your customers go to your website and read your messaging. Um, marketing isn't one of those things where I know exactly what your customers want. I know exactly how they're going to respond to a message and, and what's going to work. Um, you know, it's, it, it just doesn't work that way. Um, Cause it, it, that's just, that's just the, that's just human nature. So we're constantly changing it and evolving it because you deal with things like ad fatigue and all different types of things where you got to stay fresh and, you know um, so it's, it's a constant fluid and evolving uh, space from a marketing perspective. And we have to inform our clients of that. Yeah, it's so fascinating because everything that you're saying that you do with clients directly, I've been doing a lot of work on Facebook advertisements and one of their processes is you don't go in with one headline, one image, one set of copy, you go in with multiple and then the algorithm itself will look at what people are reacting to best and then push that combination because it'll try different combinations and it itself will push that combination so that potential clients or whatever will see the ad that that other people have said works best and mm -hmm. it sounds like you're doing that on a on a sort of uh, you know boots on the ground kind of level and something that I'm that I'm very interested in with what you've just talked about you uh, you you wrote this to me as part of the introductory stuff and I really want to talk to you about this notion of further, further, a little bit of failure, you said 
There are so many great products and services out there that add tremendous value. However, if you can't get the attention of would-be buyers, you fail. And then you said marketing and sales drives the boat of an organization. Now, if that's the case, if marketing and sales drive the boat of an organization and that first instant of did we grab their attention sets up the success or failure, what does someone need to do? Tiny business, small person, you know, solopreneur, maybe even short of calling the, you know, the adapt you agency and going, help me. What, what do we need to do in order to get that attention so that we can help the people we want to help? Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. And it, that's a, that's a big question. So I'm going to keep the answer sort of high level in terms of, you know, essentially the question is, you know, Hey, I'm a business owner. Like, what do I got to do to get people's attention? So they buy my stuff. Right? Exactly. So, exactly. Cause you're trying, yeah. you're, you're bringing value. For example, this is what you wrote. You said, you know, they, they, they add tremendous value, but if you can't get their atten the attention of your would be clients, you're spinning your wheels. Agreed. So the first, first and foremost, it goes without saying that whatever product and service that you have to offer actually does deliver value, right? So we're going to make the assumption that these individuals, uh, those listening, first and foremost, you've got, you know, an awesome product, you've got an awesome service that does truly deliver value, because that's going to be very important, right? Because we sure. can shout from the treetops and have amazing marketing messages, but if your product kind of stinks, it doesn't <laughs> matter. But right. that right. said, I've seen some um, some horrible products that sell off the shelves because of brilliant marketing, right? right? You know, I mean, some products, it's just unbelievable how much they sell. Like the Snuggie. I mean, the Snuggie was cool at all, but my goodness, that was one of the most highly successful selling products ever. Um, and a lot of it, I think, was attributed to... Um, to how well it was marketed. Mm. And, you know, we have, I have clients now that have to go toe to toe with customers that have huge marketing budgets and it can be tough, right? Because cleverly written copy imagery uh, and a variety of things can take a product that kind of uh, stinks and make it look really, really good. Right. Mm. So mm -hmm. I think what's most important uh, when it comes to making people aware of your product is knowing where your audience is. Right. So I'll call this the pool of attention. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, some, some products and services, people are, you're going to be best found, for example, in social media. That's where your audience is spending most of their time. Some people, uh, some products and services, you don't want to spend any money or any time in social media because this type of product and service is typically searched for, let's say, in Google. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it, you know, because, it, it, because it's just, it's just, that's where people go to look for those types of things. Right. So, uh, you know, and, you know, we work a lot with real estate syndicators, for example, as clients. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of real estate syndicators listen to content on podcasts. Mm. So we work to help people develop podcasts and help people get booked on podcasts because that's where the syndicator's attention is. That's right. where their audience is. That's a big, that's a big spot. So understanding that pool of attention, that's where the fish are swimming, right? So that's where I want to go fishing. Um, then from there, I think it's really, really important to, um, to be able to have very, very clear, concise, simplistic messaging in what it is that you do. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times businesses, they are trying to sell 50 million things. Um, and it's very confusing what it is that they do. If you can't explain to me in one sentence, well-written, what it is that you do for businesses or what you do for customers and the problem you solve for those customers, um, then th that, that you're going to, you know, that's going to be a, a big part of your failure. So it's super important that uh, you're able to explain it, it, what it is that you do and the problem that you solve for people in all of your messaging. So I'm talking the way the ma your videos look, your images, your copy, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. The key is making it simple, right? Mm -hmm a lot of businesses fail in their messaging and in their marketing because they try to intimate value through complexity, mm. but it's through simplicity that you win, 
right? Einstein talked about it all the time, right? Anybody can make something complicated. True genius comes from making something simple. Right. Same with marketing, right? You don't have some, you have 50 milliseconds, right? I can't have a really long drawn out explanation of what it is that I do, right? I just want to get it knocked out really quick. So knowing where my people are, having that message crafted and delivering that message appropriately into those pools of attention is at a very high level, what's going to separate those uh, you know, who succeed from those who fail um, in terms of getting my message to the right people. And then the third part of that, right? So again, step one is knowing where they are. Step two is crafting my message, which again is copy, imagery, website, you know, ads, all of that stuff. And then the third part of that is my experience. So once they come to my website, once they go to my, you know, to that Facebook ad, once they come into my universe, right? I've got my well-crafted message. I've put it in the right pool uh, or, or audience. And I have sort of those fish are swimming there. I pulled that fish onto the boat, right? I got them on the boat. Now, what do I got to do in order to keep them on the boat, right? So what is the experience that you deliver in terms of how easy is it for them to make a purchase? How easy is it for them to be able to get in contact with you? All the systems and the automations that happen on the back end of your digital world to be able to ensure it's a good experience so that people don't bail. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so, cause that's where a lot of people, they do a great job with their messaging. They do an awesome job with putting in the right audience, but where they fail is like once, okay, once they show up at the store, the experience stinks, right? right. So you got to make sure that you're doing a good job because from then there's going to come the referrals, the happy reviews. And that's where really your business is going to take off because, um, as much as, uh, you know, we run a marketing firm, your best marketers are going to be your happy customers. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And I love that you made it so succinct. Thank you for doing that because it, the, that's sort of like the, the trifecta of, of being successful at it. And let me ask you a question. Is that same model going to work for nonprofits, charities, people who are doing really altruistic work, or is it more geared towards the for-profit world? We spend the majority of our time in the for-profit world, but from a nonprofit perspective, you know, if your goal is to be able to, you know, let's say for a nonprofit, they're really looking to do what to, to, to raise capital for their cause. Um, let's say for example, in that nonprofit example, um, it, 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 the same, the same holds true, right? I mean, you still have to know where your audience is. You still need to be able to um, deliver your message on what your nonprofit does and who it impacts. Um, and then you need to make the experience for those who come to your nonprofit um, a very you know, simple and easy um, uh, process. Well, you know, the more stress you create in your wording, in your, in your messaging, and in your experience, the more people are apt to leave, right? I mean, if I open up a shoe store, Right. And I walk through the front door of my shoe store and I put an end cap right in front of you that's selling Oreo cookies. I have to walk around the cookies to get to the shoes. Like that's just creating stress. I might walk in and go, oh, wait, I thought this is a shoe store. Why is there cookies? And I might leave. Right. So right. that's the simplicity in the messaging. Take all the junk out, take all the crap out of the way so that I'm just dealing with. Boom, I walk in, I see shoes and it's it's easy for me. So, um, you know, I think it becomes. Um, even more crucial that the experience is even more heightened with a non-for-profit, um, you know, you know, because maybe they have a little less to spend when it comes to advertising and, and trying to get people in their door. Mm -hmm. So their door may not open as much. Mm -hmm. I, I love what you said about take all the junk out of the way to help them get to where they're trying to go. If you want, if you're selling shoes, let shoes be the thing you're selling instead of I like Oreo cookies. Wow, but it's a it's it's it is what you said. It's it's very simple. It's not easy to do, but it's very simple. And I'm I'm so grateful that you took the time to talk about this because it's not something we think about as, as people who are business owners, small or large. I don't know if we think about it in those terms that it's change and you have to keep it simple and that trifecta that you talked about, Derek. I'm that was really informative and, and exciting to hear from, from someone who walks the walk and talks the talk. I appreciate you being here. I would love it if you wouldn't mind because to make it easy, like you said, 
the experience. Let's make the user experience super easy. If somebody wants to know more about you, who you are, the the Adapt You podcast, everything, can you tell me where someone who's looking for you would find you? Yeah, absolutely. So, and thank you for that. Uh, simply go to Adapt Media Agency dot com or just google adapt media agency make sure to add the word agency because there is an adapt media they're out of canada they're a competitor but um uh-huh. <laughs> so we do adapt media agency um if you put in Derek peterson adapt media agency into google you'll see me pop up of uh, a podcast and you'll see our website pop up but on our on our website you will see um you know everything marketing related how to get in contact with us tons of information and free information to just help you better understand marketing uh, as a business and business owner and also on there you'll see the podcast is also on that same website so to keep things simple to keep it all in one spot uh you can see the adapt you podcast on the adapt media agency website um so and if you're looking for the adapt you podcast Again, just Google it, Adapt You Podcast, and, and and we'll pop up. Awesome. And I'll also put links to everything in the show notes so that we have it all in one place to make it as easy as possible. I've heard it described as frictionless, and I, I think that's a brilliant way of looking at it. Derek, I would love to ask you one last question before I let you go, because as I said, I could keep you for the next six hours, but I know you have a life to get back to. The question is simple and and a little silly but i find that it yields some uh profound results and the question is this if you had an airplane that could skywrite anything for the whole world to see what would you say Mm. like one of those little like planes you see on the beach with yeah like skywriting behind it Mm -hmm. oh okay Mm -hmm. all right great question and silly i love it um that's a good (laughs) question so i think what I would have behind the plane and it shouldn't be too long. So it wouldn't take the plane into the ocean (laughs) is the only constant in life is change, which is kind of a oxymoron, right? You know, cause change isn't really constant. You know what I mean? Um, (laughs) The only constant in life is change. And, and the reason for that is that it, you know, people can understand that, that, you know, things are going to change and, get used to the fact that things are going to change, mm-hmm. embrace change and practice change, right? Intentionally challenge yourself. Then you get used to it so that when change is thrown upon you, whether it be in business, whether it be in, in any part of your life, you got it. You got this. You're ready to roll, you know? So uh, that that to me is is important because the one thing most people resist is change. For sure. Yet it's the one thing that's never going away. Right. <laughs> for sure. Oh, Derek, thank you again so much for being here. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. This is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm sure you enjoyed this episode. Go find Derek Peterson. You're going to love the stuff on his website. Find out more about the Adapt You Podcast. And also, if you're liking this show, do me a favor, rate and review it. Tell a friend about it just so that we can get more people thinking about innovation and change and how we can creatively think and innovate our lives and our work. And until next time, I'm here to remind you to listen, learn, laugh, and love a whole lot. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new. And if you like what you're hearing, please review it and rate it and let other people know. And if you'd like to be a sponsor of the show, I'd love to meet you on patreon.com slash innovative mindset. I also have lots of exclusive goodies to share just with the show's supporters there. Today's episode was produced by Zolda Trachtenberg and is copyright 2021. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, keep living in your innovative mindset.